Hi folks, Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And uh, for today's video we're going to dive into the collections a little bit. All right, we have opened for the season. We opened yesterday. It's our first weekend and we've probably had maybe about a hundred people a day. Which was really nice on opening. We had a nice ceremony but it poured rain all day. So to have a hundred people on board walking around outside um, in the rain is heartening to see and it's part of our mission to bring people aboard. Uh, that gives me a, a minute to take a short deep breath and say okay I gotta start getting back into the collections now. Uh, and ultimately it comes from cleaning up my office. If you've seen other videos of my office you'll understand what I'm talking about. So going through uh, yesterday and today uh, I'm gonna highlight some things for you uh, that would then lead to talking about arrangement and description and things that I went to school for uh, getting a master's in library science of things that we do uh, to help preserve the collections. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, the first thing is it's not a donation, it's a loan but I tell you I'm gonna work to get it a donation is a photo album from Verna Peter whose husband was Tom Peter, and he served aboard the Sullivans from 57 to 59. And right on the first page here, you're getting interior shots of USS the Sullivans, which for our ship is so very rare. I have not come across many uh, images of the ship, interior of the ship, while in service. So this is these are really nice to see. So these are of the mess deck. You'll see the racks that would have been uh, along uh, the port and starboard uh, interior. So when the ship comes back from dry dock, these will be nice photographs to use as a reference. And even the TV up here. All right, here's the Sullivan's uh, with an unwrap. Got a nice shot of the bow. Of course, looking aft, got the bridge. This was before the bridge was covered. I don't have my glasses on, but yeah, it doesn't look like they have the covered bridge right there. And of course, uh, starboard, uh, I'm sorry, port looking forward with the K-guns. So yeah, there's a lot of fabulous photographs in here. Yep, we got a guy on the quarter deck in his tropical whites. Tropical whites. <laughs> so this gives a really cool... Uh, view of the ship and again it's not a donation now but I'm going to try to grease those wheels to make it a donation. It's a really thick photo album and probably one-third of it is uh, family life after he came back and got out of the service so of course she'd want those back it's family photos things like that but for about two-thirds of the book is uh, his time in the Navy on the Sullivan's. Another poignant uh, collection that I processed today, if we go zoom in right down here, we have Jack Andrada, Seaman Second Class, DD-557. So for those that know, USS Johnston, he's writing a letter, more poignantly, is the date. What are we looking at there? It looks like October 31st, 1944, but for those that know, the ship was already lost and Jack was already lost at that time. So it's October 3rd, comma, 1944, 22 days before the ship went down and Jack was lost. So this is a letter that I'm going to transcribe. All right, he's written a few letters. We have a couple original letters. So it does say here as well, Dear Betty. This was from earlier, February 7th, 1943. And he does sign this letter, uh, Your Brother. So maybe he's writing to Betty, though he was slated to be married. 
There's also a couple photographs included. So what you do is you separate out the material and it's connected through its accession number or a number, you know, a donation number. And so you can have media like this, letters, manuscript, collections, but then you can also have photographic collections like here, and they are connected, not physically, but they are connected through that accession number uh, or the donation number, whatever you'd use. So typically when I started here, I'd use the donation number, which would just be a chronological number and the year. So if it's the first donation of the year, it'd be 2023-01, and then you go up 2023 to-50, or however many you get on. And that's how you'd, you can separate these out into the different media types, which then it's easier to find. Like someone wanted to see photographs of this, if I just went, I wouldn't know to look in the manuscript collection, I'd got to go to the photographic collection. So he's in here somewhere in the white envelopes, his photographs. And then it says, oh, see this collection here, see that collection there. Also on donation, got these really awesome Bell aircraft, Bell servicemen um, kind of booklets from when Bell aircraft was here in Buffalo. Uh, producing about 13,000 P-39s and P-63 Aracobra and King Cobras. And reviewing these, these are like troubleshooting manuals. And this was the first one they produced. So you can see there's Plain Pete. All right, he was the mascot. And they explain here that he'll go through and he will f troubleshoot, uh, you know, things that are found on the line and how to correct them. And there's actually two of these for the years 1943 and 1944 and into 1945. I guess I should do that. And then which ones are missing? We also have this really nice uh, collection uh, from Norbert Doherty. Doherty? Doherty. Sorry. <laughs> so this is a photographic. Now he served aboard two vessels. I don't know. It's a little sparkly. You might not be able to see that but the Glendale and the Hopewell from 1950 to 1954. So he was from Buffalo, and this is his time aboard uh, these two vessels. Also, as I was just talking about with the USS Johnston, if we come over here, we also received his sea bag. So he's from Buffalo, there's his name, there's his service number. And so again, I can't store the photographs with the sea bag. So they each get the common name, or the common number, and then that's how I will be able to locate them in the future. Alright, unfortunately I came across this. Scrapbooks, fabulous scrapbooks. All right, scrapbooks are give such insight and such history into uh, into the time. Obviously, this is World War II. Uh, this says in the corner uh, over here, May '43, number three. So this would be the third one. This goes actually from May 1943 to September of 1943. So you can see what they clipped and cut out. Uh, but I have not yet found one, two, three, or one, two, four, five, however many there were. But that will be uh, quite researchable. Uh, that's boots on the ground. That's the time period that the events were actually occurring. And one last collection I'll highlight is got this wonderful collection of photographs. Now, reviewing these, uh, it seems as though he was from Buffalo. I uh, don't have much more information than that, but he served on the USS Oakland, which is funny, I just talked about in a video about Bethlehem 
I think it was the Bethlehem Steel uh, San Francisco one, because that's where it was constructed. So there's some great shots of the Oakland in here, and this is actually a really large collection. All right, here and also here. But you'll see that we have a lot of curling right there and there. So the way to solve that, and I don't know, these have probably been curled for many decades. But the way to solve this is I'm going to get uh, a container, like a to-go container, something really sturdy, uh, plastic, and you put a little water in it, and then you get a metal shelving unit, and you could rest these photographs in there. And the reason why photos curl is because they dehydrate, like many things. So we'll be introducing uh, humidity and water, not to the actual photographs, but the humidity the water creates, and it will begin to lay these images flat. And then after that, I can then gently either put them in the leaves of a, a thick book, uh, or if they come flat right out of the container, I don't believe they will. But that's a way to uncurl photographs, is to put them in a sealed container with a little water, obviously make sure it's a metal rack, uh, so there is no water transfer. Uh, and then leave it in there for a day or two. Uh, and then you can then put them in a book or underneath something heavy. And then that will rehydrate and straighten them out. So there's a lot more to do, as you can see in the office here. All right, I also came across, before the Sullivan sinking, I made signs for some of the artifacts in the Sullivan's Memorial compartment. All right, of course, we, we uh, got that World War II flag. I made a sign for that. And we received from Kelly Sullivan, we received uh, some items from the church and school that the boys attended. But of course, then with the capsizing last year, I never put these up. So. When the ship comes back from dry dock, these will go back on board with the actual artifacts that we have. So I hope this was a pretty interesting insight. This is why I love doing what I do. You have to learn everything. Um, you, well, you have to read everything. You begin to absorb the information. Uh, there's another great collection over there from... I think it was uh, the CO, and I know I'm, I'm pointing off camera, sorry. So that, that's something I have to do as well. Uh, there's another collection right at my feet that looks like uh, it's fun to go through. All right, so I will go through this. She wrapped everything really nicely. And then everything will have its place, depending on the media. And then everything will have... Uh, an accession or a donation number to tie it all together. So I hope you enjoyed. If you, if you have questions, please leave them. Please consider becoming a member. Uh, we have a, we'll be doing a lot of videos for members only. And um, oh, they're talking on the talkie walkies there. <laughs> and uh, so we'll see you again soon. Hope you enjoy. Please leave a comment. Um, Please subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't uh, become a subscriber and receive notifications. And uh, we will see you again soon. Take care.